Gents, Pond here with another video for Rise of Empires, Ice and Fire. Today it's one of my orange hero guides. Uh, before that, of course, please do click on that like if you're liking these hero guides. And if you haven't already, why not click on the subscribe and ring that bell so you can get notifications whenever I'm dropping videos on the channel. So, on to the hero at hand. So we are going to be talking about Rogue in this video. So Rogue is one of the three troop-specific heroes that you can get from the batch of, of 10 orange heroes so the rogue gavin great name um he kind of looks like he's out of lord of the rings would be my opinion with these kind of design i don't know what else everyone else thinks um so he is a cavalry specific hero and let's have a look at the skills that he's got so skill one is of course the dictator skill the usual 23,100 extra troops in your squad skill two hanashi it's a combat skill effective range is four so with an effective range of four you're probably going to be looking at putting rogue in the middle row of your squad but of course in the early stages of the game if you have hardly any orange heroes then you can put him anywhere um you're just not going to be getting the full benefits of these skills so it's a it's a 30% chance to deal 251.5% damage. Don't know how they've come up with that figure. Uh, to two random enemy squads within range. So it's three, three, um, 503% total damage, which is not bad for a skill two at this stage in the game. 30% chance isn't great. You're probably looking at it activating two times in a battle, maybe three, four if you're really lucky and making them take then the it does have a nice additional element to it making them take 21 percent more skill damage lasting one turn so if any of your uh complementary heroes or rogue do activate their skills then it's going to do more it's going to do additional damage so let's have a look then um, at his other skills skill three and skill four first skill three defensive formation as with El Zorro and Demon Spear, that his, um, Rogue is giving you an extra 5% on the resistance and also on skill 4, an extra 5% on the might compared to the 7 normal orange heroes. So that is why um, he is definitely a slight cut above um, those other 7 normal heroes. The next big reason for him being slightly better is this skill 5, Intimidate. It's a prep skill. He is the only, or, only hero out of those 10 orange heroes that have... A prep skill all the others all of their skills are combat skills why is that important a prep skill is going to activate pre-battle and it is not basically triggering every turn so it can't be um it can't be silenced so there's a reduction in the amount of times that it can be countered by your opponents what's this going to do well for the first four turns of the battle two random enemy squads will deal minus 35 percent less combat skill damage don't know, shouldn't really have the minus there, but never mind. It's obviously just been lost in translation. So it's 35% less combat skill damage from two random enemy squads. So he's debuffing your opponent. 35% less is a considerable amount, particularly at the early stages of the game. And effectively, this is activating four times on turns one, two, three, and four. So it's guaranteed activation, which is really important at the earlier stages in the game where you have all these other heroes with their combat skills which are all chance based um with rogue you're getting this intimidate um skill activating in the first four turns every battle which is really nice his sixth skill the awaken skill as usual it's going to give you the extra 250 percent bonus so you can match your troop count in your squad and then it's also given 15 percent resistance and 30 cavalry speed so it's a bit it's a bit weird but also i can't giving that extra cavalry speed it could give you the edge so that rogue is going first um you know you could actually put him on the front row uh, because he's giving this extra cavalry speed so that your squad goes first um in the battle as well and the resistance so he's quite flexible as a hero um at the early stages of the game his seventh skill Discipline, again, the benefit of him being a troop-specific hero is that he's going to give 30%, 35% extra might to the three squads in your formation as opposed to the normal boost from the other heroes, which is 30%. So uh, that's, a, that's a little upgrade of 5% compared to the other seven normal heroes, orange heroes as well. And then lastly, his ape skill, Hack and Slash. Uh, so you're going to see this skill and a much more advanced version of this skill on the Avalanche at SX2. 
Uh, for me, the Avalanche is the best hero in the game, but Rogue has a slightly more basic version of Hack and Slash, and so it does require one turn of prep. So, say if it activates on uh, turn two, it will trigger on turn three, and there's a 40% chance, so you're probably looking at it activating three to five times in a battle on average, and this is going to attack two times, but each attack randomly selects an enemy squad within range, dealing 369% damage. So, in theory, it can actually select the same squad and hit them twice, which would do 738% damage. Now, that is the most single damage to one squad from an orange hero. So, again, if that targets the opponent's front row both times, that is going to... Uh, that's doing a lot of damage exactly where you want it to. So, it's quite a nice... It's a nice ability to have. Let's have a look at Rogue in action, then. Um, so I did. I have him in some of my maxed in some of my farms. Um, I did put some of my farms into Heroes Jewel today, and funny enough, Pom Farm Two and Pom Farm Three actually faced off against each other. So we're going to have a look at this battle report uh, because it worked out that both of their squads, uh, both of these formations, had Rogue. So in Pom Farm Three, I put Rogue on the front row. You can see he's maxed there with T7 troops. Pom Farm 2, he's on the middle row with a maxed North Rage and a maxed Heaven's Justice behind. And uh, this rogue is working with T8 troops. So in Pom Farm 2, he got off five skills. In Pom Farm 3, he only got off four skills. For, to be honest, that is about right. If you're looking at what we said, you know, that skill one activating probably two or three times in a battle, that skill five uh, that skill eight activating three to five times you're going to see a lot of instances where rogue is only activating his skills four five or six times in a battle because you've also you're getting that prep skill activating as well which is guaranteed at the start so let's have a look at this battle then so this is what you're going to see both the rogues will activate their intimidate first pre-battle see there's no round and now go into battle round one one of them has Triggered um, has actioned their hack and slash. So that's then going to trigger on round two. And because Rogue was on the front row and had the plus 30 combat speed, that means this Legion went first. So on turn one for the opponent, no Rogue did not activate any of his skills. And then here's the hack and slash. So middle row, back row, okay. And now we're getting an Hanashi. So that is that skill two doing 251.5% damage. And this rogue now has been suppressed by North Rage. So let's just speed this up a bit. Heaven's Justice getting his skill off, hitting all three there. Sentencing, so yeah, having Yammer on the back row is not a good idea because some of his skills are going to be out of range like we saw just then. Um, this rogue has just activated a hack and slash, uh, has just activated a sl hack and slash that's going to trigger in round four. So it'll be interesting to see uh, which rows that targets. And don't forget up to round four, you've got the Intimidate skill act, um, triggered. So... That hack and slash targeted both the middle and um, front rows. So that's the thing with Rogue. Like you're not going to see probably so many skills activating in the battle because he's only got these two two skills that are going to trigger. There's Hanashi. So it doesn't do he doesn't do a great deal of damage, and then the the opposite is doing Hanashi as well. What you should also uh, remember is that this bottom group of troops is T7 and the top row is T8. So that's why the skills are doing more damage to the to the troops on the bottom section because they are lower. There you go. Yammer's triggered his sentencing three times and it can't reach. There's hack and slash again. This time it targeted the middle and the back, uh, the front and the back row. So we haven't seen an instance where it's triggered both. Oh, and North Rage has just suppressed 
the rogue on the front row here again. So he's not going to activate any skills in turn seven. Oh, sentencing again out of range. So there we go. Uh, so, yeah, so then suppressed, but this rogue is using Hanashi. That time it targeted both the middle and the back row. So with that range of four, if you put rogue on the middle row, it will his Hanashi will reach the back row of the opponent because it's got a range of four, so it can go over the front your front row, the opponent's front row, middle row is row is the third row, and then the back row is the fourth row. So that range of four it can target anywhere. Of course, if you uh, do put him in the back, he will just about reach um, the front two rows with that range of four on his skills. And there we go, guys. That is the battle. So with Rogue, it's not just what you're seeing uh, in terms of the physical, um, the, the literal skills that he's getting off. Having this Intimidate skill is a good benefit. Um, obviously, it's a bit difficult to see that in that battle because um, it wasn't T, it wasn't the same troop type against each other. Plus, obviously, both of the rogues had this triggered on turns one to four. So you were seeing it was basically countering themselves because both of the all of the squads in uh, well four of the squads all had minus 35% combat skill damage for the first four turns because of that skill so rogue is a really nice hero um, particularly early in the game you're getting that extra might and resistance on on his skills three and four you're getting the extra might for the rest of your formation on skill seven he's got guaranteed skill in this intimidate and his Ape skill hack and slash can do a lot of damage to a specific target if you're lucky. Um, so he is a really good hero at orange and he would definitely be an upgrade on, say, if you've got like Yamaraja in your middle row, uh, then Rogue's going to be better than him. Um, whoever, yeah, I mean, whoever else really you put there, whether you've got a Rough Rider there or um, you probably want to be using Dual Blades with your archers so for me usually a lot of players would have for instance orochi rogue and then heaven's justice in their cavalry legions um at the at the beginning of the game and yeah generally you want rogue to be on that middle row as i've said but if you really are struggling for say if you're at the early stages of the game you've got two or three legions unlocked with all three heroes slots but you say only have um, Heaven's Justice, you haven't managed to pull Hurricane and El Zorro, then you could use Rogue as a back row hero as an emergency. Just as, you know, you could also use him as a front row hero if you really had to, if you didn't have Rough Rider Orochi or North Rage. Um, he is kind of flexible in that regard, but it's not ideal. You really do want to be placing him on that middle row. In terms of his skills, of course, as usual, you're going to have to unlock that sixth skill first uh, because... Uh, well, because that's the only one that needs a duplicate to awaken. Um, for me, again, you want to be unlocking the ape skill before you unlock the seventh skill because, you know, this ape skill can do a lot of damage. Um, getting an extra 35% might is not such a big deal. That's only going to represent maybe 10-15% of your total might even in the earlier stages of the game um, where you don't have such advanced research or gear. So definitely unlock his ape skill first if you can. It's always important to be able to have as many skills that can activate and do damage to your opponent as possible. Um, and yeah, that's that's Rogue. I mean, in the long run, yes, you're going to pick up other heroes like Bulwark or Roku, Rosen. Um, so potentially by S3, you might not be using Rogue. It just depends on how lucky you are with recruitment. Um, S4 as well, Brave can be used in the middle row. So um you know, I said in my main account, I have got rid of Rogue now that I'm in um, SX. I've got lots of cavalry heroes, so he is not used. I don't even use him if I have four legions because I've got so many um, cavalry season heroes. Um, but for those of you that aren't picking up a lot of those middle row heroes, it's it's 
you could potentially be using Rogue in a second or third Cavalry Legion all the way into Eden. Just depends how many heroes you're recruiting. Uh, so there we go, you guys. That's everything on Rogue. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, then please do click on that like. And um, I'd be interested to hear any comments that you have or any questions that you have about Rogue or your formations and what orange heroes you're using in with. And uh, of course, please do share my channel in your Alliance chat, Province chat, and through Line, WhatsApp, Viber, Discord, whatever you use to communicate with your fellow players in the game. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.